Hello, everybody. This is, if I count correctly, the 10th edition of the Transform webinar meeting uh, the left. We have tonight uh, Katarina Peovic, who is the first anti-capitalist member of the Croatian parliament. Congratulations to this, uh, Katarina. Uh, she Thank belongs you. to the Croatian Workers' Party and uh, the Croatian Workers' Front, sorry, uh, is part of a bigger coalition, namely the Green Left Coalition, Mojemo. Uh, Katarina agreed to have this interview in English, which makes things much easier than usually. Thanks for that. I want to introduce my colleague Angelina Giannokopoulou from the Nikos Polanzas Institute. She uh, lives in Greece. Uh, she is a facilitator of uh, the project on uh, left strategy in the frame of the Transform Europe Network. And I also will introduce uh, Dagmar Svendova uh, to you, who is the producer behind the scenes and taking care for that everything uh, runs smoothly. I myself, I'm uh, Walter Bayer, I'm a Vienna-based uh, economist, and uh, I belong to the board of Transform. Since there has been a longer break between uh, the uh, different editions uh, of this webinar, uh, I want to introduce Transform in one word. It's a network of 35 organizations from 22 European countries, and it's associated as a think tank to the uh, party of the European left. As far uh, as uh, this uh, webinar session tonight is concerned, there will be a first part in which Angelina and I uh, will ask questions to Katarina. And uh, after finishing this first part, there will be uh, a second chapter, uh, which provides the possibility to the audience uh, to ask questions. Uh, the technical instructions concerning this uh, will be given later. And uh, without any further ado, I pass now the floor to my friend and comrade uh, Angelina, who will introduce Kater Katarina a little bit more than I did, and she will also ask the first question. Please, Angelina, floor is yours. Thank you, Walter. Uh, welcome, Katarina. We are very pleased having you with us this afternoon. Uh, well, for the audience, um, in her civic life, Katerina is a university teacher. She's an assistant professor at the Faculty of Humanities and Social Science Sciences in the Department of Cultural Studies in Riega, in Croatia. She holds a bachelor and a master degree in comparative literature and a master and a PhD from the Faculty of Philosophy in Zagreb. She has written on the um, relation of contemporary technology and philosophy. And as Walter already mentioned, she's a member of the left uh, Croatian party Workers' Front or Radnika Fronta, uh, which is one of the six parties uh, who united in this green and uh, left coalition called uh, Mozemo Political Platform, which in the parliamentary elections of the 5th of July, 2020, uh, collected seven percentage of the vote. Uh, those Katerina is the first radical leftist MP in the Croatian Parliament, so congratulations. And now my first question uh, is related, obviously, with, um, with the pandemic. Uh, so how could you describe that the whole uh, situation with the pandemic affected your country? What were the measures taken by the government uh, in Croatia? And how has COVID-19 changed the social life in Croatia. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Angelina. Just a little uh, remark uh, I need to uh, make before I answer your question. Um, uh, our coalition is called uh, Green Left Coalition, and Mojemo is one only one of the six parties in this coalition. Although they are called platform, so this is confusing uh, our <laughs> visitors and our uh, members and um, uh, international community. 
uh, they are called platform Mojimo, but uh, our coalition uh, is uh, combined uh, of uh, six uh, autonomous uh, parties. Uh, within Mojimo is only one of them, Workers' Party and uh, New Left. Uh, within uh, with Mojimo uh, entered the parliament with one uh, independent uh, politician. So uh, among the six parties, three of them are members of the parliament right now. Um, and we can say that really left entered uh, our parliament uh, in great style, so to say, because this um uh, climate changes that happened in our parliament are uh, we can um uh, we can today say are radically new and different uh regarding this question um how uh, has the pandemic affected croatia and how uh, has uh, our government uh, dealt with this problem uh, first of all, I have to say this, that these days we have a really seriously dangerous wave of the illness. Uh, uh, within the last 24 hours, for example, new uh, 890 infected persons. In Croatia, there is over uh, 5,500 uh, infected. Among them, uh, 570 patients are on hospital treatment with uh, 32 on the respirators and unfortunately 381 uh, died. So we have really uh, a dangerous situation. This in Croatia, uh, we can uh, say that our government is not facing this problem in the right way. And I will shortly try to elaborate why. Of course, we can say on the one hand that, to quote Marx and Engels from a communist manifest, that all that is solid melts into air, that everything uh, changes in this moment. For example, there is no more hard limit to the public spending. Uh, EU loosened it, uh, its rules. But on the other hand, our government does not deal with this social and economic crisis in the right when, way within this uh, context, uh, especially having in mind that uh, Croatia is an uh, example of a peripheral capitalist economy um, in uh, Europe, peripheral uh, European economy. Uh, which suffers from a uh, wide range of problems, we can say. But uh, the worst way to uh, face these problems within this COVID crisis, within this uh, capitalism at the periphery, is to um, keep the status quo. And that is what our government is <laughs> doing uh, right now. We already have the problem of the ossified economic structure. Ossified economic structure is characterized by uh, deindustrialization, the lack of a development of new technologies and opportunities to improve production process. We have the problem of uh, shutting down last export industries. Uh, for example, a shipyard industry is uh, shutting down uh, for at least uh, 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 several years now. So we had this really uh, developed uh, industry and we are uh, losing it. Uh, uh, our economy, for example, uh, uh, suffers from the uh, typical economic rentier model uh, that means that we have the dominance of the trade and service sector. Uh, we have continuous uh, foreign uh, trade deficit and constant increase in uh, external debt, which entails uh, an increase of uh, in structural unemployment. For example, uh, even before crisis, we had uh, more than than uh, uh, more than 19% uh, um, uh, uh, of the share of tourism in GDP. 
we had one of the lowest employment rate in the European Union. And this uh, cannot be challenged by keeping a status quo. Of course, um, elite capitalist groups like entrepreneurs try to also force some changes in, um, I would say, um, um, exactly the, raw, uh, 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 the opposite direction of the uh, left economic and social policies. Uh, but all, we have to be sure and we have to uh, do exactly the opposite of what is government doing. We have to challenge this economy um, that is, as I said, a typical uh, uh, peripheral uh, economy at uh, uh, EU periphery. Angelina knows how this works in uh, Greece. We have this model. Uh, I would say um, we are going uh, in this direction as Greece um, did uh, with many things. For example, we are um, entering the uh, um, Euro uh, zone uh, without democratic um, uh, debate on uh, what this Euro uh, is bringing to uh, Croatia and how this monetary sovereignty is um, lost without any um, uh, public debate or a referendum of, on this question. I want to uh, uh, go further with this, although I could, because it, it has many, many problems are um, now uh, very uh, obvious in Croatian uh, economy, but I will uh, for the time being uh, uh, stop with uh, this uh, not so optimistic view that I started <laughs> with. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Uh, let's talk on uh, optimistic views. Uh, for us, uh, abroad and transform as a network is following carefully the development of the left movements in the different countries. However, it was a surprised learning uh, that you ended in, entered in such a spectacular way the Croatian parliament. I think that uh, for us it was a surprise for you not so much because the process which led to this result uh, started much earlier and that's uh, my question now to you could you a little bit describe the coalition how it was uh, constituted and what are the experience which you collected on the way to this electoral success well, I'm uh, a member of the Workers' Front, as you mentioned, a Democratic Socialist Party uh, with direct democracy uh, process going on within party, which emerged uh, from various activist uh, movements. The crucial one, I would say, was the student movement in 2019. Um, 2009, uh, uh, sorry, which was devoted uh, to the defense of free uh, public higher education, <clears throat> a so-called uh, student blockade, uh, during which several uh, public faculties were occupied. So uh, the Workers' Front uh, was formed uh, um, as an offset of these uh, processes in uh, 2000. Um, 14 uh, and uh, workers front i wasn't a member of the workers front at the time i um, joined workers front at uh, in 2017 but uh, at the beginning uh, workers front uh, as today is very active in workers strikes in uh, public uh, strikes and um, protests and we are really stressing the importance of the uh, activism and activist political work and not only ele uh, uh, electionist um, framework and parliamentary work. So we are um, uh, trying to combine today when we uh, enter the parliament, these two features of uh, Workers' Front, we have really a good um, communication with workers today, because of course, 
they are more conf confident in workers front today when we have some uh, 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 power to speak for them. So we have really good uh, um, uh, communication and uh, really uh, live and vivid um, uh, uh, activist uh, connections with the syndicates, with um, workers, and uh, we are um, participating in the, uh, their uh, struggles. Uh, for example, tomorrow I'm going to Rijeka and we will have the press conference on public uh, transport uh, because workers in Outro Trolley, a public firm in Rijeka contacted us with their problems and we will talk behalf on, on their rights because they are uh, not in the position to step out publicly. But uh, nevertheless, um, to uh, cut the story short, um, after um, this uh, uh, very first um, um, uh, formation of the Workers' Front, a uh, wider green left coalition uh, took form uh, in the uh, 2017 uh, during the municipal elections uh, to the city assembly and uh, during the time we loudly criticized the corrupt uh, policies of the longtime mayor in Zagreb. So this is the reason why uh, one uh, member of our coalition, Mojimo, has a uh, very good uh, position uh, uh, in the forthcoming mm -hmm. elections uh, and possibility uh, to uh, have uh, also major mayor in Zagreb. Ahead of the December uh, and 2019 um, elections, the Workers' Front decided to nominate me as a presidential candidate. This campaign was very important for uh, Workers' Front, but also for um, socialist ideas, because for the first time we had a democratic socialist candidate in our presidential elections. So we asserted the need to combine uh, social ownership with worker organized production and the production that meets social needs as our first um, uh, political uh, topic that we uh, forced upon uh, during this election. So this last point, uh, directing production towards social needs uh, was particularly important in the context of the um, uh, presidential elections. But today, during the Corona crisis, it turns out that this uh, perspective is more important that than uh, Croatian public um, actually uh, um, uh, uh, thought of because it was particularly important then and now is uh, more important after we suffered the lack, for example, of medical supplies um, in the campaign. For example, we criticized the condition of the public system, public education and the lack of social housing. We managed to start debate on the dangers of um, uh, giving up from this health system, public education and uh, social housing in Croatia, uh, just to um, uh, uh, just to point out the fact, for example, that in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Yugoslav uh, socialism, one third of the population lived in social uh, flats. Social flats were available to uh, lots of people uh, in Croatia. That is why we have a very high standard of uh, private flats. In, we and Romanians, <laughs> the highest uh, 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 good standards of uh, private housing, um, that is uh, really uh, the condition that came from uh, a socialist um, uh, importance of um, of building this uh, this housing and of course in the process of privatization uh, people came uh, to be uh, owners of these flats but um, uh, what we pointed in this uh, uh, public debate was really importance of uh, public uh, housing uh, um, 
uh, education and health system. And today we see how this is important. Uh, now we can see that we cannot go on without our medical equipment producing in Croatia, without um, uh, without producing uh, food and uh, uh, without industry of food production, etc. And uh, during the uh, these elections, it wasn't so clear. Maybe um, uh, so. After this um, election, pre uh, presidential elections, uh, we have uh, another parliamentary. We're uh, quickly, uh, pretty much uh, quickly after this, we have another parliamentary and elections. That, as Angelina said, on July the fifth, again coalition came together. The name of the coalition is Green Left Coalition. So um, we managed to uh, enter the parliament and uh, the rest is history, <laughs> so to say. Uh, you mentioned that we came uh, in the position to, um, to enter the parliament. We have uh, six um, uh, candidates, six uh, members of the parliament, uh, uh, sorry, seven members of the parliament out of 151 member. And also, we are now preparing for the local elections. Uh, I'm uh, um, uh, uh, expect, and I would be very pleased to see coalition come together also uh, on these local elections. Um, especially because my party decided to nominate me uh, for mayor of Rijeka because of our good results in uh, Istria and Rijeka, uh, we can expect also to have very close battle with uh, social democrats there, uh, uh, which run the city uh, for many decades. Um, however, Although they are social democrats, the city of Rijeka is uh, especially devastated, I would say, even more than Zagreb is. Thank you. Know, staying, uh, let's stay a bit uh, on the elections of the 5th of July. As we understand, the winner of the elections was uh, Andrei Plenkovic Hadese while the Social Democrats suffered a crushing defeat. How does the political landscape uh, after the elections look like? Uh, what are the most critical points, so to say, briefly? Well, uh, the HTZ, uh, Croatian Democratic Union, did get a lot, uh, a lot of seats in the parliament, uh, but uh, they actually had the second worst result in the history uh, because of the low voter turnout they really um, did did well uh, on uh, these elections but um, a low voter turnout uh, sent a message to the Croatian uh, public that people are tired of um, this uh, duopole of uh, so-called left Social Democrats um, and HDZ um, right uh, party in Croatia. So uh, also we have to say that HDZ uh, is responsible uh, for uh, the situation in uh, which we are today. I don't know, have you heard of the incident that we had, had uh, recently in Zagreb? Uh, of the right-wing extremist, um, some uh, would say terrorist action in Zagreb. One young uh, person uh, killed himself uh, before that he um, attacked uh, the building of the parliament. Um, uh, it seems that he was aiming to the uh, prime, prime minister. The young person is related to uh, extreme right groups, uh, as it seems to be. Um, and uh, many uh, of the public um, critics and analyticians say that uh, 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 
especially HDZ in the last uh, parliamentary session, in the last um, uh, uh, period uh, in which the same prime minister was uh, entitled, what, uh, is responsible for the um, uh, for the um, extremist right um, ideas uh, forcing in um, and straightening in within public space. So um, unfortunately, uh, the even more right uh, and rigid right has straight, strengthened in our country um, during uh, the last uh, HDZ. Um, uh, 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 government attacking uh, women's red reproductive rights, asking for a ban of abortion. Um, such policies are just, uh, of course, and we have to say this, uh, are just a cover for further disenfranchisement uh, 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 and impoverishment of the working majority, while uh, selling us stories and myths about um, conception, they reach uh, for the pockets of impoverished uh, workers, the unemployed, uh, the retired, etc. The straightening of the right is uh, partially uh, also um, uh, paradoxically the result of the compromising of the social democrats, uh, which for years pursued uh, uh, an opportunistic and anti-worker policies. Uh, also right and left, so-called left, uh, HDZ and social democrats um, um, uh, pushed uh, uh, policies that are uh, really anti-worker policies. And now we have the um, result of that. Uh, we have 13% uh, of um, emigration, and this immigration is, of course, economic emigration. We are on the top of the list uh, of um, stati statistical uh, data, Eurostar, uh, statistical data that uh, show us that we have really um, uh, huge numbers of people that have to emigrate because of law, uh, because of poor economic conditions, uh, lack of, uh, of course, employment, uh, poor wages. We have only 37% of uh, Western European wage and so forth and so forth. So we have really um, a situation in which, in which popular majority has lost trust also in social democracy and in this, I would say, more or less civilized right. Um, it, and this is a, a moment in which uh, authentic left has an opportunity to step in and to uh, first of all, develop the argumentation and uh, uh, completely different argumentation on how this happened, how we managed to be uh, so uh, poor, uh, how we managed to be uh, at the uh, really end of this uh, economic uh, union, uh, uh, European Union because uh, the result, uh, results does not show uh, this in um, clear, I would say, uh, because of the uh, low uh, voter turnout. Nevertheless, um, uh, the results of the Croatian parliamentary elections on July uh, uh, 5th were uh, mostly grim news, um, really with the, not only a really good result of the HDZ, but also rise of a hard right party uh, that is called Homeland Movement. Um, they are actually now in the parliament uh, really um, not a big and important party. They turn out to be less um, 
uh, less uh, hard on their argumentation in the parliament. Uh, and I would uh, say that this is good because their um, popularity is right, is uh, falling. Um, uh, we can certainly, I would say, use Tariq Ali's term extreme center to describe this politics of two dominant parties, the Croatian Democratic Union and Social Democratic Party for their nominal right or left orientations uh, have a common denominator, mm -hmm. the extreme slashing of workers' rights, lowering taxes for the riches, of course, privatization of public infrastructure and resources, and so on and so on. So uh, while left-wing ideas are often, often discredited as um, extremist or um, in the best uh, form as radical, for the policies of center, uh, mm -hmm. Nobody say that they are extremist um, and that they present a real danger for the working majority mm -hmm. and uh, are uh, first um, uh, um, uh, task is to explain this and now we have uh, more opportunities to do so. So um, for our part, uh, we demand uh, democratization of political processes uh, within parliament, but also in this um, activist uh, um, activist um, uh, policies that we are stressing. This means including the wider community in decision making on what, how and for whom we produce uh, as a society. Most people are left out of decision making while parliamentary democracy limits what can be a subject of democratic questioning. So we believe that politics is for the many, not for the few. And this is what we have, uh, um, uh, uh, what we uh, stressed in the, um, before we became a parliamentary uh, party and now even uh, more political space is uh, left for the authentic uh, left to uh, uh, to describe this um, process of the uh, in which this majority is um, is trapped on of every uh, right to decide what and uh, for whom and how we uh, produce. And we think that in uh, most uh, cases in Croatia, actual actual cases in Croatia, and uh, I would say in sc even scandals, um, uh, first of all, corruption scandals, uh, is not uh, uh, enough described. And uh, this policy is not uh, clear for uh, majority because uh, this was not taken into account in many cases. But now we have the opportunity to develop this argumentation and to um, put these democratic for forces in the uh, uh, in the field of majority and to. Uh, force that uh, give force to that majority to um, to empower uh, this many for for democratic and socialist um, ideas and uh, acts it is not uh, an easy task i must say because uh, media and uh, public uh, discourse is not uh, uh, acquainted with this um, with this um, argumentation is not uh, familiar with this argumentation and uh, we have uh, a difficult uh, situation in in which we uh, only have our voices to uh, develop those ideas and uh, we don't have a political um, power to, um, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, form the legislative uh, or something like that. But now we have pretty much better 
position that than we had before to to stress this uh, political uh, um, uh, argumentation. Let me ask you a question about the far right. It seems that HDC went somehow to the center. Uh, is now member of the uh, European People's Party, which doesn't say much, given that uh, even Viktor Orban's party, Fidesz, is uh, a part of the People's Party. However, it seems it has changed somehow. And then you have now an extreme right party. And my question is, uh, could you describe this extreme right party? Is it uh, a populist party? Is it a militant party? Uh, how does it fit into the general picture of the far right in Europe? Uh, true. HDZ worked a little bit on their public image. Uh, recently, they were gestures, for example, of reconciliation between Serbs and Croats in the public space. For example, Croatian Minister of Croatian Veterans visited the place where innocent Serb civilians were killed during the civil war in Croatia, while representatives of Croatian Serbs commemorated places where Croatian, Croatians uh, were killed. These public gestures are important. We cannot say that they um, are ir irrelevant. Also, HDZ is in the coalition with the Independent Democratic Serbian Party, which is the reason why this far right is really, really uh, angry on HDZ and why this extremist right, um, even military um, uh, um, actions, uh, are taking place in Croatia, so we cannot, uh, we cannot, we can, we, uh, we really can't say that this is not uh, important. But on the other hand, uh, the government is not dealing with the uh, reasons, uh, material reasons mm -hmm. for rising of the um, uh, extremist right uh, in Croatia. Um, and also, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, for, forgive uh, HDC the fact that the uh, last government uh, was also formed uh, with extreme right uh, politicians as part of this um, HDC last mm -hmm. HDC coalition, uh, and those politicians openly celebrated fascists. Uh, fascist movement in Croatia during the World War II. So uh, uh, HDZ is really responsible uh, for uh, dangerous historical uh, revisionism toward uh, World War II, and they also allow, allowed uh, the use, uses of the fascist salute uh, for homeland ready, uh, which is equivalent in Croatian history. It is a equivalent of, of fascist Nazi uh, salute uh, Zikheil. So those are really political issues that uh, has to be uh, addressed when we are talking about this uh, polite version of uh, HDZ these days because they are uh, off with this right extremism. They are off with this right extremist uh, politicians because they don't need they don't don't need them anymore. They are in the coalition with um, with uh, um, uh, uh, Serbian um, uh, party um, in Croatia. But um, also these recent events uh, in Croatia really uh, stress this, these questions. Um, but as I said, uh, the problem is in material nature of this uh, disenfranchisement uh, and this um, poverty of the majority in Croatia cannot be, uh, is related to this right extremism uh, and cannot be solved without uh, solving this um, questions of the material conditions or in which uh, majority is living today in Croatia. For example, we are a nation of 4 million people and we have also uh, almost 1 million people living in poverty. So uh, this um, 
this is a, a small example that uh, really uh, stressed the fact that uh, Croatia is um, in the poor condition uh, at this historical moment. Um, and for example, we have our government uh, lowering the tax, taxes for the richest ones in Croatian society. From next year, they will uh, be lowering taxes uh, for uh, those who have high higher wages. Um, of course, they are expecting and they are elaborating this move um, within this um, analytical uh, uh, understanding of um, um, of uh, neoliberal uh, understanding of uh, um, economics, uh, trickle down uh, economy, that after they will they lower taxes for the riches, uh, also poor will be um, in the better position. But that this never happened, so we cannot expect that this have that this will happen um, within Croatian society um any day now uh so our uh, mission is to stress this also and to explain this to the pro poor majority why this is not happening and that we would be better off with the left government when they would uh propose progressive uh, taxation for example there are many other of course cases and examples that can be um uh, sorted out, uh, not only taxes, of course, but I stress this as an example of how this right wing uh, government is not um, addressing the uh, situation and um, uh, problems in the right uh, way. Thank you, Katarina. Um, a whole other topic now at the beginning of the year, we were quite shocked by the pictures of police brutality against the refugees in the Croatian-Bosnian borders, uh, which is actually an EU external border. However, nothing happens there uh, without the consent of the European Union. How is the situation right now with regards to this issue? And a small parenthesis, please try to be shorter from now on because we are like, 20 minutes to eight. So. Okay. Uh, I will telegraphically answer this. Um, again, Croatia is unnecessarily playing the role of um, last bast uh, bastion of uh, European uh, Europeanists in uh, increased xenophobia and uh, fear uh, without reflecting on uh, real problems related uh, to these um, immigrant questions. Um, I would say that um, uh, you are true when you, when you say that nothing happened without uh, EU um, um, green light. So uh, this is combined, of course, with uh, um, having the immigrants in Croatian public space uh, marked as a scapegoat uh, and uh, immigrants are found as one of the weakest and most vulnerable groups. Refugees are um, uh, pictured and, um, and um, uh, described as the most very problem of our society, which is certainly uh, cannot be the, the case. So recent pushbacks through the green border back to Bosnia and Herzegovina was um, uh, denied by our government, but um, uh, it is certainly happening and we have, uh, uh, we have um, proof of that. Your mic, uh, turn your microphone on, Walter. <laughs> Thank you very much, Angelina. Sorry for that. Uh, I want now slightly to change the topic. Uh, Croatia now is for 
if I'm right, almost uh, a decade member of the European Union. And uh, recently you also held uh, the rotating presidency of the EU. If you were to strike a balance on these 10 years, how would you say has the EU membership changed and shaped the country? Well, there were really great expectations from uh, entering EU and um, our membership in EU, but um, majority of people uh, today is um, forced with uh, reality. Left was uh, um, uh, uh, left critiqued uh, this entering uh, EU. Uh, and was skeptical about entering uh, EU, but uh, today uh, majority of people, I would say, uh, are not so pleased with, with our um, membership uh, in the EU. Uh, let's only um, uh, stress a few statistical uh, data, which are the, the best illustration of how we declined. Uh, for example, um, the country has been to uh, the, con the country has uh, really um, uh, the worst statistical um, um, uh, data um, on uh, atypical, so-called atypical contracts, uh, precarious jobs. Usually, three mo months uh, contracts make uh, approximately 6.4 percent of contracts in, in Croatia. For example, uh, France is second high with the average uh, around 4.9 percent of temporary atypical contracts. So Croatia is really high in, uh, on that precarious job positions. Um, we are, uh, if I'm right, a third uh, at third place in uh, uh, Europe uh, with that uh, atypical precarious working conditions. And those precarious uh, conditions are not good for workers because workers are not um, um, in position to um, have uh, steady payments. It, one cannot have a loan uh, for uh, for uh, buying a flat. We are uh, actually uh, in situation that uh, young people are going uh, to migrate from the country even more um, <clears throat> because they ha uh, don't have the opportunity to have a normal life, to have an, uh, uh, some kind of um, um, uh, life that have that has uh, that uh, young people uh, in uh, uh, Central European countries are having. So we have really high uh, migration, and it is really a very um, serious problem uh, in Croatia because young and educated are leaving the country. So I could say telegraphically that um, EU membership. Um, and now major um, um, and that now majority in Croatia would agree with me um, that EU membership uh, is not good for, for Croatia but of course it has to be added to this why it is not that uh, EU countries are um, uh, uh, that th this EU membership is uh, at its itself uh, um, uh, something um, uh, not good for Croatia, but uh, I will telegraphically add three things that would be good for Croatia and for European Union and for countries at the periphery um, uh, fiscal union. Uh, uh, it could, uh, those countries, rich countries would have to uh, transfer technology uh, within European country as fiscal union uh, would uh, uh, have uh, would uh, prepare a European Union to be really country that um, a really community that um, um, uh, in some way overcomes uh, inequalities. Uh, uh, so uh, this would be uh, a fiscal union would be a, a first one. The second one would be a transfer of technology, and the third one would be um, a suppression of the. Um, um, 
suppression and um, some kind of uh, subsidizing domestic production and uh, uh, repressing um, import and uh, of the poor uh, poor countries and um, uh, developing ex export of the poor countries in that way uh, European Union would be a really union of uh, equal countries and uh, for from our point of view this is the um, the most important task for the European left to uh, stress those those three issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, since you already made some suggestions towards the European Union, my next question would be, um, most probably the global recession in the wake of COVID-19 will not be a normal slam, and it will be followed, uh, followed by a return to normality, so to say. On top of this, the environmental crisis, we all know that is still looming. Uh, the European economies will have to transform their manufacturing and service industries, also due to the digitalization. What, according to your opinion, should uh, the European Union do in order to protect the European people uh, from the impact of the crisis, uh, in particular? Yes, actually, I already uh, answered that question, sorry, but I was um, in advance uh, um, answering what I didn't have, have as a question, but I think that those three issues would be the, the most important um, issues for the future of European Union. If you um, remember the uh, debate on the Corona, um, within Corona crisis um, uh, uh, and uh, post-corona period uh, within European Union, we can say that uh, there wasn't a solidarity between rich countries and poor countries, and that we saw this um, inequality, uh, uh, un, uh, inequality between uh, rich countries and poor countries uh, uh, as stressed and um, really uh, vivid uh, during this uh, crisis, um, for example, the, the, the debate on euro bonds uh, make this uh, fact really um, obvious that uh, the fact that rich countries um, doesn't have in mind that the fact that they would have to um, to um, make things easier for uh, poorer country, countries within Europe. Uh, rich countries uh, try to um, uh, save them uh, and to uh, make they, uh, their uh, lives more um, uh, better, but uh, we didn't see this uh, solidarity uh, within European crisis on this issue of uh, euro bonds. Um, so in this context, I would say that um, left within Europe uh, has the an opportunity uh, to stress those things, uh, even uh, of course, and uh, to stress th those things um, uh, uh, except uh, 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 those things that are that were obvious also in the uh, Greek crisis. So uh, Greek economists, as Varoufakis and others, stressed uh, the importance of this uh, solidarity within European Union that we cannot see these days, um, and also um, forced the problem uh, of European Union. Um, as uh, interest and economically um, unequal uh, community. My last question to you is this. Uh, given this scenario of the European crisis and the critical political juncture in which we are in, uh, what kind of European cooperation you think should be established among the leftists? And is there uh, a political structure on the European level you relate to? And lastly, what are your major European partners in Europe as a party? 
uh, we are now entering the European left uh, community of uh, left parties. Uh, we really we have a really good um, uh, collaboration with Transform Europe, of course. Uh, within our region, we are in the um, we are mostly connected with the uh, Slovenian left. Slovenian left is a party uh, that uh, works as a form of um, example, uh, exemplary model for, I would say, for uh, all parties within a Balkan region, ex um, post Yugoslavian uh, countries, because uh, Slovenian left um, show how this process of entering parliament should go and how these policies uh, within our region must be um, uh, must be uh, discursively formed and how this um, uh, can be explained to majority of people and I would say the, Slo the Slovenian left also uh, we have the collaboration with um, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina where there is no uh, radical left party, but there are some actors that we are forcing to form party uh, and we are um, helping them with our experience. Um, and also we are in the uh, connection with uh, Serbian radical left party, which is formed uh, recently and uh, with uh, members of that party are uh, long um, um, active activists uh, on the Serbian uh, left uh, scene. So I expect that Serbian uh, radical left party will be important uh, political actor uh, in uh, next uh, uh, period and um, electoral um, uh, phases. And uh, of course, uh, we have some connections um, with um, other parties uh, within Europe, uh, and we are expecting to force those uh, uh, connections because we are we became parliamentary party, and now we have a better position to collaborate uh, within uh, European Union. And I am expecting that our next uh, elect, uh, elections on a parliament, uh, European Parliament. Um, I hope so that, that it will be uh, better for the left in Croatia. Uh, it wasn't so good the last time. Thanks. Thank you, Katarina. Thank you, Walter. Um, I think I now have to give the floor to my colleague Dagmar uh, in order to read out the questions from the audience. We have 15 minutes, so I think it's sufficient. Um, just a minute so I can give um, video and audio to that one. Yes, hello everyone. I hope that you can hear me. Just signal, please. <laughs> Good, good. I think I am hurt. Uh, so I have a couple of questions has uh, been collected, uh, which is uh, brilliant. Uh, I will uh, start with uh, the uh, since we spoke the last time on the European Union. So I will just carry on and then I will breach to the local election and uh, keep the, let's say, the more philosophical questions to the uh, to the end. Uh, the European uh, Union uh, has been discussed. Uh, there is a question whether you think, Katarina, that all European countries will benefit equally from the COVID drugs and vaccine, and whether you can evaluate the issue for refugees in the EU. Uh, I believe we have touched upon the refugees a little bit and the situation on the borders but perhaps can you briefly react on this? So the COVID drugs and vaccine and the refugees in the EU. Well, of COVID drugs and vaccines, I would say that uh, we can expect that this uh, inequality also reflects on this issue, unfortunately, as it always does. Um, inequality is, um, 
present in every social and economic aspect of our lives. So unfortunately, we have to be prepared prepared uh, to uh, expect this inequality and uh, unequal um, um, treatment uh, either of uh, di different uh, classes within uh, one country and within uh, rich countries of Europe and uh, peripheral uh, poor countries uh, of Europe. Uh, that will be interesting time for us because the, for the first time we will um, we will uh, experience uh, this issue on the level of a basic medical supply. Um, we are in the form and uh, sort of um, in a Marxist term war economy actually. And war economies uh, shows that um, economy tends to um, to uh, levels on the basic stuff, and uh, we are uh, during the war economies uh, we are experiencing uh, stressing of the most important things in our lives. That means medical supplies, uh, health insurance, uh, 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 education, uh, food, uh, shelter, um, housing, and so on. Uh, and it's in this question, we can go both ways. We can go uh, either to the uh, brutal neoliberal um, exceptionist uh, unequal um, distribution of those goods mm -hmm. or we can change our policies in order to uh, be solid solidar to be uh, to uh, express solidarity and to give every person the same opportunity uh, and care so this this will be really uh, interesting uh, historical moment to uh, question those basic human and humanistic uh, questions on the uh, question of um, um, migrants uh, and refugees uh, is uh, if I'm right. Well, um, I would say that. Um, uh, Croatian situation on this point is specific uh, since we are really in this uh, political and uh, uh, social ge geographic um, situation in which we are playing the role of um, ante murale christianitatis, that means the um, uh, bulwark of Christianity, uh, fortress Europe is. Um, uh, is uh, in a metaphorical way uh, attacked with refugees and uh, Croatia is playing uh, the wrong uh, role in this um, unnecessarily uh, brutal um, um, clash uh, in which we are really uh, taking the wrong side and even from the point of view of uh, totally opportunistic policies in Croatia, these uh, right-wingers are wrong because most of the refugees only wants to pass through, the, through our territory. And we are uh, doing the business. I'm taking the side of, right, of uh, extremist right in this point uh, in order to, uh, to stress how this is totally uh, a wrong uh, interpretation of what is happening to us, uh, those uh, refugees and immigrants um, are only wants to pass through our countries and uh, extremist right is taking the side of the rich European countries and they are uh, uh, stressing their political uh, stance to be sovereignistic. And this is really um, uh, historically and politically um, uh, very uh, par paradoxical uh, position, I would say. So, uh, Croatia really have the uh, really have an opportunity to uh, 
show the solidarity because we were also immigrants. We were also refugees during the civil war in Croatia and many people stresses this fact as most important. Uh, and uh, uh, um, at least from the point of view of uh, humanistic um, uh, view on this issue, many in Croatia are uh, really uh, on the side of refugees and immigrants because of that. Thank you, Katarina. I will now move to the local arena, uh, arena so-called. Um, you have a local election in front of you. As you have already mentioned, you have uh, at the beginning of today's interview, you have explained uh, the Green Left Coalition composition of the that is co composed of six different components. And you have also uh, said that you hope for these components to go together to the local election. So there is a question um, regarding uh, the call for different organization in this local election and how uh, will the coalition, especially Rednička Front, answer to that challenge? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, within that question, I uh, can see that the person that is asking this question is familiar with the problem that is um, uh, that is uh, active in this moment. Um, few members of um, one member of our party stressed the fact that they could be a possibility that Mojemo does not um, stand uh, beside me on the, this uh, decision uh, to run for a mayor of Rijeka. I hope that this uh, won't be the case, that left will really uh, demonstrate uh, is, its strength and its uh, solidarity and unity, because in this question we uh, have to be um, on the same side. Uh, because of several uh, things. Uh, first of all, Radnička Fronta and I uh, came as a third political uh, party uh, at last uh, uh, elections, parliamentary elections, um, and we have uh, the possibility to uh, confront uh, social democrats that uh, run this city uh, for the last 30 years. And uh, secondly, because uh, Radnička Fronta decided to, um, to uh, strongly support uh, Možemo's candidate in the Zagreb, Tomislav Tomašević, as well as all other candidates uh, in other cities in Croatia where uh, some other party or parties uh, came with the best result. So the most uh, rational decision in this case is to uh, uh, to run Radnička Fronta and me um, uh, for a mayor in uh, Rijeka, as it is uh, rational to run uh, Tomislav Tomašević in Zagreb, because we have the best uh, possibility and best, um, uh, we are the best options for uh, the left at this moment. So we very much hope that you will find uh, the right solution which will work and wish you surely the success also in this local election. But uh, I can add only one uh, sentence. Yes. Why this is so? Um, there are many uh, um, uh, mostly neoliberal commentators and analyt uh, uh, analyticians. Uh, that are forcing our split. So I hope that we won't um, be so naive uh, and to um, uh, to uh, to hear those voices as relevant. It's actually uh, what you said is correct. I can just confirm when I was looking for the information on the Green New Coalition, I have read uh, many, uh, many sentences, whether this will last, uh, how long it will go <laughs> to fall apart and so on and so forth. So definitely you are under enormous pressure, but let's uh, answer to some other questions which we have, which are more also reflecting on the, 
on the past, but also looking to the future with, uh, with a new perspective. So what would you say that the new socialism uh, needs to gain the ground, uh, ground against the neoliberalism? And could East Europe propose such a new socialism, taking into account their or already political experience with the socialism? <laughs> a difficult. <laughs> No, it's it's a it's a right question, I would say, because uh, it is before because of this uh, experience of uh, of socialist Yugoslavia that we have the opportunity to compare capitalist uh, post uh, communist uh, countries with uh, socialist uh, countries within Yugoslavia, and we have to say that we, uh, the uh, Workers Front and me, we are not forcing the reconstruction of the socialism, uh, Yugoslav socialism. Mm -hmm. uh, on the contrary, we are critical toward uh, lack of uh, democratic principles, for example, within this uh, Yugoslav uh, variant of uh, socialism. But nevertheless, the ex uh, experience uh, of uh, workers uh, self-management for example is a very valuable um, historical lesson for us and we can learn from that lesson a lot so uh, this is a good question really especially the point of view uh, that this question is stressing uh, whether on the periphery of Europe we can uh, we can expect um, this radical uh, new uh, political uh, experiment to flourish. Uh, this is the right question because, um, for my point of view, uh, I think that uh, especially within this peripheral uh, capitalism on the Europe, we can expect uh, some new experiments to uh, uh, to flourish because of um, this uh, exper uh, experience of uh, lowering material conditions of life uh, in only few decades. And this uh, lowering of material conditions of life and um, a rising of the poverty uh, within 30 years is so obvious and it is so um, um, clear to the um, majority uh, in Croatia and in other countries uh, of post-Yugoslav countries that uh, this um, uh, cannot be challenged. Even uh, extremist right uh, would say that wouldn't challenge the fact that people uh, lived better within socialism. They would challenge everything else, but that ca they cannot challenge uh, statistical data. Uh, for example, as I listed uh, earlier before, earlier the statistical data that one third of uh, people lived in, uh, uh, in social flats, for example that um, standard was uh, higher um, than today, 30 or 40 years ago, that we had a uh, very um, strong industry that uh, in the, uh, during the Yugoslav socialism, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much. I believe that uh, the question which I'm going to read was uh, actually answered uh, already, but just to uh, cross check so we don't forget any, uh, uh, we don't forget anything, but somehow I lost it now. So I do apologize, but it disappeared now from me. So, but I believe that it was really answered by uh, by what you just said. I would close this uh, this um, 
around of the question actually with uh, the one which emerges to me because from what we can see in all different countries across the Europe now during the COVID pandemic is that uh, COVID is kind of an uh, uh, is kind of overshadowing uh, the other important uh, or very topical question of the political uh, political life in the country and I just wonder um, you know what would, uh, would be your like key priorities except of the COVID-19 pandemics and its effects uh, or uh, more importantly, uh, because of the COVID-19, what would be your priorities now uh, to deal with uh, as the leftists in Croatia under the current uh, circumstances which you have described? Oh, well, first of all, we have to um, defend workers' rights because they are attacked. Uh, mostly uh, they are attacked uh, from the corner of entrepreneurs that are uh, using this COVID crisis to lower the workings, workers' rights. And workers' rights in Croatia uh, were uh, low uh, from the beginning of COVID crisis and even before COVID crisis, uh, workers' rights were not uh, on the list, on, highly on the list of the uh, priorities of the uh, government. So uh, we had also social democrats lowering workers' rights and uh, HDZ lowering workers' rights. And now the first issue for the left is to defend those rights because these tripartite uh, conversations are started already started and uh, syndicates are defending uh, workers' rights, but entrepreneurs are trying to lower these rights um, with this argumentation, of course, that they are attacked by this COVID crisis and that they don't have the opportunity to produce, um, uh, to, to produce a profit. And uh, uh, what we need to stress in these uh, conversations and in this debate is that uh, entrepreneurs already started uh, from the position that was not so good for the workers and that uh, they're lowering those conditions uh, will only make things worse. So even from the perspective of entrepreneurs, this is not good. Okay, this is good for them uh, in the long term, but this cannot be good for the country uh, as a whole. So um, by lowering those uh, rights, we will only have uh, more immigration. We will only have uh, import of the uh, um, of the working uh, force uh, from other countries, from Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia. Uh, we all already had some uh, legislative decisions uh, within this uh, parliamentary, um, within this um, uh, period uh, uh, when parliament uh, was active, which uh, uh, allowed uh, also lowering on the standard and importing uh, um, a working force and always will somebody uh, want want wanted uh, will somebody work for the lower uh, wage and uh, on the other hand we have eu legislative that is uh, defending workers uh, in uh, rich countries, uh, this is really paradoxical situation that we are importing this legisl legislative that is um, that is uh, um, uh, that is defending uh, workers' right in the uh, rich countries of the mm. center, and at the same time we are not defending our working force. And this is not some kind of nationalist xenophobic defendants, but this is uh, actually um, uh, uh, important important issue for the left to uh, equal rights of the foreign and domestic workers for the sake also for the foreign and domestic workers, because uh, with uh, uh, 
uh, equalization of the payments, we will have really also solidarity and we will uh, come to the end of the inequality, which is actually um, uh, a produ produced by these in, uh, uh, unequal wages. So, for example, we are working on the um, uh, minimal wage uh, proposition of the minimal wage that will not, and this is uh, something that we are working uh, in the um, uh, in the um, uh, uh, with with the uh, Slovenian left, uh, with the communication with the Slovenian left, uh, they already uh, uh, proposed very very good uh, um, legislative on a minimal wage, and we, we will only import their um, their uh, legislative um, and try to impose this at our parliament. And this uh, minimal wage is not um, some abstract minimal wage uh, with percentage uh, of the um, medium wage uh, uh, correlation with the percentage of the medium wage. But this minimal wage is related to the minimal uh, uh, expenses for the um, a person living in uh, Croatia. So Slovenia uh, already ha has uh, two times uh, greater minimal wage than Croatia because they related a minimal wage with uh, conditions of life, with material conditions of life. And this is something that we will uh, stress upon uh, uh, in our parliament as Radnička Fronta and I hope so as a left, Green Left Coalition. Katarina, thank you so much. I pass the floor to Walter and Angelina. Yes, it's now on me uh, to close uh, this uh, webinar session. Uh, I would like to thank Katarina on behalf of my colleagues, uh, Dagmar and Angelina. I think it was really very, very interesting and fascinating. And allow me to say, uh, as an Austrian who spends a lot of times his holidays in Croatia. It's so wonderful that we have now uh, a strong radical left party with all its contradictions and difficulties as usual. Uh, however, that is one of the nicest things we had during the Corona crisis. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Katarina, to spend your time with us. It certainly was not the last time that uh, we meet. Um, you will find uh, this event also recorded on our website and uh, we continue the series in November. We don't know yet with whom and we don't know yet when, but we have a plan in abstract at least. And I would like to invite uh, all those who attended uh, this session tonight uh, to uh, turn to the Transform website to receive the relevant information. and. On the top of all this, stay healthy and safe, and hopefully we we'll see each other in pretty soon time. Thank you very much. Thank well, you very as much. a Dalmatian, I send you greetings, and I hope <laughs> that you will come to our shore. And as a Dalmatian, I say thank you. Uh, as Austrians also have a strong left uh, uh, parties and strong left uh, tradition of strong left parties. So. You know, the Austrians look optimistically in their past. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Thanks a lot for all this. Bye-bye. Have a nice evening. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for Thank attending. You.